Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and we are still in Unit 3, Section 4. And we're focusing on the ideal gas law in this video. So the ideal gas law is written as PV equals NRT. So what do all of these, these variables and, and letters stand for? Well, P stands for pressure. And specifically, in this gas law, pressure needs to be in atmospheres. And so that means that if for some reason you get a pressure that's not in atmospheres, you're going to have to convert it to atmospheres. Now V represents the volume of the gas. And that's going to need to be in liters. Once again, if for some reason you're given a volume that's not in liters, if it's in milliliters or you know, gallons or something like that, cubic meters, you're going to have to convert it to liters in order to use it in the ideal gas law. Now N stands for the number of moles of gas. And so when you look at the moles of gas, you know, if you give a if you're given a value that's not in moles like uh, grams or possibly uh, molecules of gas, you're going to have to convert it to moles before you can plug it into N into this equation. Now T stands for the temperature of the gas, and that needs to be in kelvins. And just like it was in the, the uh, gas laws in the previous video, if for some reason the temperature is not given in kelvins, if it's in Celsius or something else, you have to convert it to kelvins in order to make this work. Now if you look at these, these four variables here, you'll notice that these correspond perfectly to the four properties of gases that we talked about a couple of uh, videos ago. We said that every gas has a pressure, it has a volume, it has a temperature, and it has a, a quantity of, of gas. In this case, it's moles. So we have those four quantities. Well, what's the relationship among those four variables? Well, that's where the R comes in. The R is the variable that makes all of this equal out. And R represents the universal gas constant. And that value is equal to 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Now depending on the textbook, depending upon you, whom you ask, uh, they may express this like this. They may write it as 0.08206 if you want to go out to four significant figures. But this is essentially the value for R. Now notice the units. It's a constant, so it has funny units. Liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And that's one of the reasons why you have to have all these other units in those prescribed units. If you don't, then your constant doesn't work. So you have to use those, those other units, kelvins, moles, liters, and atmospheres, in order for this constant to work. So 0.0821. We're going to do a few examples together here in the video to see how we understand the ideal gas law. So we have a rigid steel container with a volume of 20.0 liters and it is filled to nitrogen or filled with nitrogen gas to a final pressure of 200 atmospheres at 27 degrees Celsius. How many moles of nitrogen gas does the cylinder contain? So we're going to use PV equals nRT and we're going to plug and chug. Now P is for pressure. Excuse me, for pressure. So notice that unlike the gas laws we had in the last video, we're not changing anything. There's no initial pressure and final pressure. It's just pressure. So it tells us right here that the pressure is 200 atmospheres. So we're going to plug that in for P. Now V is the volume. Same thing. There's not an initial and a final. It's just a volume. And it's given right to us here in the problem. The volume is 20.0 liters. So I'm going to plug that in for V. Now equals an N. N stands for the moles. And that's what we're solving for. It says how many moles. So we're going to use that as our unknown. R is that constant that we talked about, 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then T is for temperature, 27 degrees Celsius. We need to convert that to Kelvin. So when you add 273, that becomes 300 Kelvins. Now we can do the algebra. From this point, this is just a math problem. So multiply and then divide both sides by 24.63 
and we get an answer that n, the number of moles, equals about 162 moles of gas inside that container. So once again, we've mined the information out of the problem, we've plugged it into the uh, equation, and then we solve the answer using our calculator. Now let's try another problem. This one says, what volume will 12.0 grams of oxygen gas, O2, occupy at 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 0 0.520 atmospheres? So once again, we're going to have to plug into PV equals nRT. So P is for pressure, and it says the pressure is 0 0.520 atmospheres. I'm going to plug that in there for P. V is for volume. Now we're solving for that because it says what volume. So that's our unknown. Now N is the number of moles of gas. Does the problem tell us how many moles of gas we have? It doesn't, does it? It says 12.0 grams. Now we can convert that, but we have to go kind of off to uh, the side here and convert that separately. So kind of off to the side here, I'm going to take the 12.0 grams of oxygen, O2, and let's convert that to moles. Now it, that's something that we learned how to do way back in unit one, so that shouldn't be too difficult. So grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And how many grams are in a mole of O2? Well, we can look at the periodic table, and it's O2, so we have to times this value by 2. It's about 32.00 grams in a mole. So when we cancel grams and divide, we find that we have 0.375 moles of oxygen. That's the number that gets plugged in here for N. So be aware that you may have to do a mole conversion, and that's normal. That's very typical. R is still our gas constant, 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And T is for temperature, and that temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now I've got to change that to Kelvin so that, once again, that's 298 Kelvins. And so now we can do our multiplication and our division, and we can solve for the volume. And you can plug that into your calculator. Make sure that you're getting the same answer I am. The volume should be about 17.6 liters. So once again, we can do an ideal gas law problem where there's a little bit of, of converting to do. Let's do one more example. This one is a little bit different. This one says in grams per liter, calculate the density of oxygen gas, O2, at 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.00 atmospheres. So this is very different, isn't it? The density. And so you might be wondering, how do we do the density? Because density is, it says it's grams per liter, and we don't really have a grams variable in here, do we? Well, there is something that we can do to get grams into this problem. You might notice that we have N standing for the number of moles. Hopefully, you would agree that to find the number of moles of a of, of anything, basically, you take the number of grams there are and you divide it by the molar mass. Would you agree with that? Hopefully you would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in place of n, in place of the, this mole variable here, grams divided by the molar mass. Okay, that's all I've done so far. Just made that little substitution. Now, v is liters, all right? So I'm going to rearrange this equation so that I have grams per liter, basically grams divided by volume. And so when I do that, I'm going to have to bring the V to the opposite side, the same side as grams, and I'm going to have to bring the RT and the MM to the side as the P. So when I do that, the equation looks like this. This is just a simple algebraic reorganization of that equation. So G over V, grams divided by liters, equals pressure times the molar mass divided by RT. I've just rearranged the equation. So now G over V, that's my density. So to find the density, all I have to do is take pressure in atmospheres times molar mass divided by RT, and that's it. So the pressure 
Well, it's 1.00 atmosphere. And so I plug that in there. And the molar mass, well, I need the, the periodic table again. For O2, it's about 32.00 grams per mole. So I'm going to plug that in for my molar mass. Next, I have the R, which, of course, is still 0.0821. That hasn't changed. And my T, temperature, is 25 degrees Celsius. In kelvins, that's 298 kelvins. So now all I have to do is use arithmetic to solve for this. 1 times 32 divided by 0.0821 divided by 298. And so I get an answer that the density of oxygen at these conditions will be 1.31 grams per liter. So make sure that you're getting that answer as well. We have worked several problems with the ideal gas law and their applications. Hope you learned something here. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button, the thumbs up, and join me in my next video in which we're going to talk about another application of gas laws. In that next video, it's going to be Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.